Hello and welcome to another episode of the Talking of Minds podcast. This episode talks about some of the common cognitive biases that happen in in the share market. Cognitive biases that can affect our decision making processes or our decisions when we engage in trading or investment or in general uh, you know uh, cognitive biases that could affect our financial decisions. Uh, most of these uh, cognitive biases have been researched in the areas of uh, behavioral economics and behavioral finance and uh, some of the pioneers in these studies including professor Kahneman and his uh, colleagues they all belong to the behavioral finance field uh some the research on cognitive biases are continuously evolving uh every day and new insights are generated every now and then we'll talk about some of the important cognitive biases that happen in the share uh, market uh, you know in the with regard to our decisions in the share market perhaps the most general one and, and the most important one is something called a loss aversion loss aversion is the pain uh, you know it says that the pain experienced due to a loss is mostly you not know, twice more powerful than the pleasure for a similar amount of profit so the pain that you experience when you lose 100 rupees is twice uh, than the happiness or the pleasure that you get when you when you gain 100 rupees so that's the amount of discomfort that we have with losses and because of this you know in order we 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 are always on the lookout of avoiding losses than getting profits uh, even though it may seem the other way around for us but most of our decisions the unconscious decisions or the cognitive processes that happen in our brain are uh, anchored towards avoiding losses than getting uh, profits and this loss aversion can have an effect on many other cognitive biases as well uh, one of the major such cognitive biases is something called endowment effect so an endowment effect happens when an individual places a higher value uh, on an object uh, because of the reason that they have they are holding it or you know because we uh, it is when we place a disproportionate value to something just because we own it uh because we are of you know we can, we are the owner of that thing and uh this endowment effect may cause us to uh you know not sell off some shares which uh which may uh, you know which may give us losses in the future because you know uh we we are attached to them because they, you know we own them and loss aversion can be a major component of uh, causing the endowment effect and thereby making it difficult for us to sell something that is going to cost us another major you know major cognitive bias is uh, something called a sunk cost fallacy uh it is uh, when we stay invested or we in, when we invest more in something because we have already invest something into it not because of any other reason or the, the most important reason for for us to invest in something or stay invested in something is the reason that we have already invested it we can think of it like uh you know going to a, a restaurant and order ordering something and even if you don't uh like the food at all we keep uh, you know we try to finish the food because we have already uh, you know spent some effort some time and even you know some money on it and because of this uh cost which is already sunk into it which you know which is already there we have you know because we have already spent something on it we feel obliged to go with it or this can happen with a very uh, you know with, with an uh, you know um, you know going for a movie which is you know very bad we do not we don't even like the movie but since we have bought the ticket and we have come here we just sit through the movie even though we can do a, a number of good things which uh, you know with the same time uh, you know we we sit through the movie because we have you know we have some kind of an investment made in that and this can happen with shares or or mutual funds or any kind of investments also you know we stay invested or we make more investments just because or or the major factor driving our decision to stay invested or make invested may make new investment is that we have already invested something on it and we don't want to or uh, you know uh, uh, we don't we don't want to feel uh, you know that we have made a wrong decision
uh, and, and this can many times lead to bigger losses uh, even if we don't uh, you know uh, if we don't realize that uh, you know we are staying invested because of this uncost fallacy another important fallacy is something called a familiarity bias which is uh, a tendency to uh, stick to stocks that are familiar to us or stick to things or uh, you know uh, uh, familiarity bias happens when uh, when we like something because it is familiar for us and we make decisions be- you know, based on this familiarity so there can be a company from which we buy products or uh, where there can be a company uh, to which we are uh, you know we are we are related to some some form in some form maybe we work for them or maybe we have seen their ads many times we have maybe we have seen their name many play, in many places so it is familiar to you and this familiarity makes you uh, take a decision to buy their stocks or stay invested in them or you know uh, invest in their ipo even though the fundamentals of the company are very weak and the chances of uh, getting a, a loss from this investment is high we go with the decision because of this familiarity that's where familiarity bias happens now there is something uh, you know uh, which is mainly emotional and a bias which is mainly emotional but we don't uh, uh, realize as such is something called a status quo bias and a status quo bias is a preference for the current state of affairs and this can happen in many places you know even with your routines your health behavior your exercise routine your diet a lot of things uh, you know a lot of decisions in our daily life are made on the base of this status quo bias and status quo bias can be a reason a behind you know people refusing to uh, rethink their investment strategies people uh, you know refusing to diversify people refusing to sell a stock which is uh, you know which is obviously going to uh, give them losses a lot of decisions uh, you know financial decisions can be based on something called status quo bias and since these biases most of them are uh, you know they operate at an emotional level we actually take decisions based on these biases and later we find excuses to rationalize those decisions that's what that's how they work in in most cases another important cognitive bias is something called bandwagon effect which again is not exclusively really to to the financial areas you know it can happen in any any uh, walk of life bandwagon effect happens when because when we do something because everyone else seems to be doing the same thing now it has to be stressed that you know it is not that everybody else is doing something we think or we feel that everybody else is also doing something so we go with a with a decision now this can happen in in, in you know, many of our purchase decisions even uh, you know uh, you know many of the advertising campaigns are designed in a way that you know they they uh, you know in in a way as to uh, you know trigger this uh, bandwagon effect in us you know to make us feel that everybody is doing us and we have something called a fear of missing out uh, you know we don't want to miss out and we also jump into the bandwagon now this happens with uh, many uh, ipos many many new uh, you know new mutual funds a lot of things you know uh, in the financial market and outside the financial markets uh, bandwagon effect can have a very you know a very big influence on our decisions another thing uh, which is uh, extensively used in in the marketing field is something called an anchoring effect uh, anchoring effect happens when when our decisions or our cognition our thought processes are uh, you know are tied to an arbitrary figure you know an offer price that we see a percentage discount offer that we see or a striked out mrp in in a shopping website you know uh, something that is actually you know the mrp is 5000 and they are giving it to you for 1500 or 1099 or 999 so this striked out figure you know which is obviously a larger figure you know it gets into a mind it gets anchored and you compare the the current price to this striking out figure and we don't know whether you know there is actually an mrp like that or some you know something but you know you get anchored your thoughts get anchored to that higher uh, figure and when you buy something you get a feeling that you are getting a bargain uh, you know e- even though it may not be actually so and uh, this happens in all kind of bargainings where you know uh, where a seller puts a very high price to start the bargaining and and this is done to give the buyer a feeling of 
uh, you know getting something at a very lower price than the initial price even though this initial figure may not have anything to do with the actual value of what is being uh, bargained and uh, anchoring effect can happen uh, with with our portfolios you know we may get anchored to a current market price or current trading price of a share even though there has been a very sharp increase in the prices recently uh, even though the share may not have an in, an intrinsic value uh, so, you know anywhere near to this uh, the figure that you saw but when you see a figure and then you see that the share is uh, the share price is going down from what you were anchored to or you know, you know uh, it's going down from the fa- values you saw uh, initially you may have you know may you may take a split second decision to buy the uh, you know buy the share thinking that this is going down you know and this is you know the, uh, thinking that this is the right pri- uh, time to uh, buy the stock now this this is how the anchoring effect can uh, have an effect on our uh, purchase decisions and all and as i already said these are not an exclusive list of cognitive biases that can have an effect on our financial decisions but all these can have a, a very important uh, effect on how we make purchase decisions or financial decisions or investment decisions and uh one important way of avoiding or trying to avoid these cognitive biases is to be aware of them uh, you know we need to be aware that many decisions that we take uh, with regard to financials in in investment or in in in, in any kind of decisions can be influenced heavily by these cognitive biases and being aware of them is one of the major uh you know things or you know, one of the uh, best things that we can do to counteract the effect of these cognitive biases in our decisions uh thanks for listening that's all about you know some of the major cognitive biases that can happen in share markets and in financial decisions thank you